together unto Him. We are gathering together unto Him. Unto Him shall the gathering of the people be. We are gathering together unto Him. We are offering together unto Him. We are offering together unto Him. Unto the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, today we are celebrating the Republic Day. And I wish every Indian a very happy Republic Day. India holds the biggest written constitution in the world and we feel proud that our Indian constitution proclaims and promotes the kingdom values like liberty, freedom, fraternity, equality, sovereignty, all these are all the kingdom values and therefore it is our duty to pray for the nation and also the national leaders so that they may keep this constitution alive and active. Today the church remembers two important personalities, Timothy and Titus. Those two were the disciples of St. Paul and they have committed themselves for the mission of Christ. And no doubt that they were very much inspired by the life of St. Paul and the preaching of St. Paul. Probably they must have been inspired the words that St. Paul proclaimed. The Galatians 6.17 we hear, I carry the marks branded on my body. Galatians 2.20 we see again, it is not I who live but Christ who lives in me. And that's how St. Paul inspired these two personalities to commit their life for the mission of Christ. Well, today the church presents these two personalities for us as models for our Christian life so that we may commit to the mission of Christ in the world. Before participating in the Holy Eucharist, let us be humble enough and let us acknowledge our failures and shortcomings and ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my, faults, through through my, my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are perfect unity and true charity, grant your faithful one heart and one mind that the body of your church which rests on the confession of the truth may flourish in harmony and be made strong in enduring unity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God desires all people to be saved. First reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. 
chapter 2 verse 1 to 8 beloved first of all i urge that supplications prayers intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life godly and dignified in every way this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of god our savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth for there is one god and there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all which is the testimony given at the proper time for this i was appointed a preacher and an apostle i'm telling the truth i'm not lying a teacher of the gentiles in faith and truth i desire then that in every place the men should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god. god our psalm response my refuge my refuge my stronghold my stronghold my god in you i trust my god in you i trust he who dwells in the shelter of the most high and abides in the shade of the almighty says the lord my refuge my stronghold my god in whom i trust as psalm responds my refuge my refuge my stronghold my stronghold my god in you i trust my god in whom i trust he will free you from the snare of the fowler from the destructive plea he will conceal you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is buckler and shield our response my refuge my refuge my stronghold my stronghold my god in you i trust my god in you i trust you will not fear the terror of the night nor the narrow that flies by day nor the plague that prowls in the darkness nor the scourge that lays waste at noon my res our response my refuge my refuge my stronghold my stronghold my god in you i trust my god in you i trust upon you no evil shall fall no plague approach your tent for you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways our response my refuge my refuge my stronghold my stronghold my god in you i trust my god in you i trust The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of the wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first to say, Peace be to this house, and if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wage. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, 
the kingdom of God has come near to you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, today we are celebrating the Republic Day. The constitution which we have prepared, we are allowing the constitution to govern us because we have prepared that we want to live in freedom. And at the same time, we remember the national leaders who are leading us in the right stride and working for the harmony of the human beings, especially the humanity living in India. Well, coming to the gospel, today we hear the gospel of today presents how Jesus was preparing his disciples for the greater mission. And he was sending them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and asking them to do the healing ministry. And he's expecting them to be the blessings among the people. And he's also cautioning them, warning them to be away from the attractions and the attentions or the temptations of money, power and positions. And he's also cautioning us that we should be prudent in the world. As St. Paul would say, let us not be confirmed to the standards of this world, but by the above. And Romans 12, 2. Let us see how Jesus was preparing his disciples for the greater mission. And we all of us know the kingdom of God is consisted of various values. Human values, social values, spiritual values, economic values. And we have plenty of values what is written even in the constitution of India. Liberty, fraternity, equality, sovereignty, love, care, concern, everything. And this is what you hear in Matthew 6.33 where Jesus says, First to seek the kingdom of God and everything will be added unto you. And for this kingdom he has selected and appointed his disciples for this greater cause. And you see Isaiah 42, 6, where it is said, I have appointed you as the covenant to the people and as the light for the nations. And Isaiah 49, 6, we hear again, I'm appointing you as a light of the nation so that my salvation will reach the ends of the earth. The similar words we hear in the Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 verses 47 where he says I appoint you as the light of the Gentiles so that my salvation will reach out to the ends of the earth. The main purpose of establishing the kingdom of God is for the salvation of the souls. This is the motto of Don Bosco who says give me the souls and take away the rest. Only thing the salvation of the souls is the prime importance of our mission. And he also asks his disciples to do the act of mercy. And Pope Francis has written a beautiful document, Misericordios Vultus, you know, the face of God is mercy. And we have to do a lot of healing ministry at this present context. And we know Corona is something that is perturbing, disturbing all of us. We are not sure how long we are going to live, but how well we live is very important. And as a Christians, as a disciples of Christ, I think we need to plunge into the mission that was entrusted to us. We need a lot of courage and we have to take a lot of risks in order to do good things. And Galatians 6, 9, it says, don't be you know, tired of doing good. Continue to do good whatever comes on your way, but with great courage. Secondly, we hear that um, his disciples are meant to be the blessings among the people. And we also hear John 13, 35. By your action, people will come to know that you are my disciples. We belong to Christ because of our actions. And we are here to be the blessings among the people and sometimes we we see that the disciples of Christ are becoming curse for the others sometimes they are the people who are cause for the divisions among the people and sometimes 
they are the cause for the impurity in the society. And today Jesus expects his disciples to be the blessings among the people. How you can become a blessing among the people? Very simple. We should have the spirit of synodality. This is a Greek word which means walking together. Unless we live with the people, walk with the people, we will not be able to show what kind of disciples we are. We observed every spirit, everything from the master, but we are not able to put into practice. Well, there we are failing. Let our presence must bring consolation to them. Let our presence must bring a ray of hope in the people who have shattered their hopes for the future. And we can be a blessing to them through our words and deeds. And only through our actions, we will be able to bring a solace and comfort in the lives of people. Sometimes when we remain as a block for a unity and for a scandal, and I think we are missing the essence of being a disciple of Christ. Look at when the smuggler Veerappan was killed at Dharmapuri, and when he was, you know, the dead body was uh, displayed in front of the hospital, there were 10,000 people to see this smuggler who shook three states. And at the same time, you see the sensational uh, co-founder of iPhone, Job Steve, when he died in New York, at the time of his burial, there were only 40 people. See how the bad attracts very fast. The goodness always remains empty. And we have to see where we really stand. I think we need to be a blessing to the family. Sometimes, you see, we look very good, very nice, we're talking well, but then our life inside is something different. Once there was a big tree, and the tree has got good fruits, and it was very greenery, and the roots were very strong. A gentleman said, if we live, we should live like this tree. And after one month, he, he was passing by that the same road and he found and the big tree was collapsed. It was down to the earth. And he was shocked. Such a heavy and very fruitful tree is on the ground. Then only he observed roots were strong, fruits were good, and tree he was very greenery. But at the bottom of the tree, he found a lot of worms coming inside and which eaten up the whole tree. I think what this uh, warms our selfishness, our jealousy. There are many things of evil things in our mind that really, you know, that brings a lot of scandal. And we speak ill of others and the pulpits sometimes. The disciples who live among people always talk ill of the other. I think we should learn as the disciples of Christ speak good about the other. The third one, Jesus was warning his disciples to be away from the attractions of this world. He was cautioning them not to get succumbed to the temptations of money, power, positions, which really destroys our discipleship with Christ. Look at St. Paul and letter to the Philippians 3, 8 to 10, where we hear that he says, Indeed, I count everything in this world as a rubbish because of the surpassing worth of the knowledge of Christ. Once if I come to know the Christ is something which is very, very precious, which is everything, the rest is nothing for me. And he, his focus was very much on Christ. And I think the disciples of Christ have to be alert and we should be very, very, you know, focusing on the person of Christ. Once a Guruji trained three disciples, after the training, he told them, look, you disciples, I am going to give you a few responsibilities, and then I will finalize who will be the best among you. And after the training, they were very anxious. They were wa watching at the Guruji, and the Guruji said, he took out the spectacles and showed to them, look, you, first one, Take care of this. The other one he showed is sandals. The another one he showed is walking stick. Wherever I miss it out, where I forget, please, mine, you get it to me. 
And the three disciples were very curious, very attentive to that. And uh, the final day came and uh, the Guruji asked the disciples, please come with me, let us walk. And as they went to little, there was a little brook, the small river was passing by. And he said, let's cross this river and uh, I will finalize. As Guruji just stepped inside the water and he slipped and he fell in the water. As soon as the disciples observed that Guruji fell in the water and three of them jumped in the water. Not for Guruji, for the material things. Three of them collected their own things, articles and they swam across the river and they were looking for Guruji. Sometimes our focus on the material things will lose the important personalities. And I think in our life, Christ is everything, not the things of this world. And fourthly, he was cautioning us to be prudent in the world. The disciples of Christ has, has come a time where they have to live being alert. And that's why he letter to them. The first letter of St. Peter 5, 8, where we hear, he says, be alert, the enemy, the devil, prowls around like you, like, you know, like a roaring lion looking for someone to eat, devour. And I think always the exterior forces will be pouncing on us. And Donald Trump, the president of America, once he said, the Christian life is not like a playground, it is like a battlefield. We need to fight every day with our temptations and with our attractions in order to you know, get in intimacy with the Lord. And today it has time come, we need, to be, we need to be aware. And it is said in the gospel today, I'm sending you as a lambs among the wolves. And uh, the present situation is not so conducive for us to live, but at the same time, the power of the Lord we can empower us. So therefore, as we conclude, what we have to do is, as a disciples of Christ, we need to be the light for the nations. To be the light to everyone means to live a very good life through our actions. And secondly, we need to be a blessing to everyone. Let us not to be a curse to our scandal to anyone. And thirdly, I think we need to prepare ourselves to focus very much on the mission of Christ to spread the kingdom of God and his value in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who renew us in your image, through your sacraments and your commandments, mercifully guide our footsteps in your paths. 
that through these sacrificial offerings which we bring, we may possess the gift of charity for which you have taught us to hope. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy through your beloved son Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as a savior and redeemer. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining you for you, holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claiming. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you are held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed Apostles, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you set your apostles. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have received, O Lord, the sacrament of unity. Grant us, we pray, that living in your house in holy accord, we may possess the peace we hand on and preserve the peace we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. 
The mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Because it's good.